In this video, we will be going over how to work with and patch process models. I'm not going to spend too much time describing what the process model is, but the high level overview, if you're not familiar with it, is in test and under the hood, it uses a separate sequence file to run other sequence files. And this sequence file manages the execution of the test sequences versus the individual uh, test steps. It's always there, always in the background running. There's a couple of them that ship with TestN, including the sequential model, the batch model, and the parallel processing model. They have uh, different functionality in them depend to make it easier to either do simple sequential tests, parallel tests, or batch tests, respectively. Now, inside the process models, you have a number of uh, subsequences that are called sequence callbacks. If you need to override the callback in an individual sequence, you can go to right click on your sequence file callbacks in the sequences area, and it'll give you a list of all of the sequences that are currently inside the, the sequence, the model that you're using. And if, for instance, I wanted to override the pre-UT sequence file callback, I just click on it. It copies it out of the model and gives me a copy that I can then modify within my local sequence. So for instance, on here, this I can change the pre-UT dialog to be whatever I want. And this is useful for, for changes that are specific to an individual sequence. However, if you have if you're building a framework and you want to modify a this a model file so that you don't have to do this in every single sequence, you, you roll it into the model file instead. So you maintain one model file instead of a whole bunch of individual callbacks in each individual sequence. That's that's the better way to do it. The problem is is that these these model files can get pretty complicated. If you go and click on it, then you'll notice that you've got a few things. You've got entry points, you've got configuration options, and then you've got a bunch of model callbacks that are tagged as model callbacks, basically. And one of the problems I see with these is, is if you get somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, or someone who thinks that they know what they're doing, or even somebody that knows what they're doing but isn't very good at documentation, then what typically happens is they'll copy one of these files, you'll make the changes to it. It's not real obvious what the changes are because of how, of how much is in this file. Some of these uh, callbacks can get pretty, most of them are empty in our placeholders, but some of them can get pretty uh, pretty long. I should, I should show one of those, one sec. I don't have a very good example I can share of, of one of these sequence files or model files getting out of hand, but trust me that you can put quite a bit of, of, of programming in them. So one of the, the ways you get around this is that if you want to track for sure everything that's changed inside one of these sequence files is use the, the concept of patching. Patching is something I picked up when I worked a lot with consumer electronics and especially products that use open source. Uh, project libraries. One of the problems with some of these open source project libraries is that when you integrate it into the larger product, you may need to change one or two things, sometimes more, to make the library work inside your uh, particular environment. Similar with test and the process model may work just fine, but there may be a couple things that you need to do, and especially as if you're if you're overriding the pre-UT dialog and the instrument framework, then you're going to have to change the default process models to do that that correctly. And so what you do with these open source libraries is that because the changes are specific to your product, nobody else wants them, the maintainers will probably not pull in your changes even if you did submit them. And so typically what happens is you come up with this patch process where you keep track of all the changes that you want to do and then you run a utility that takes all of your changes to the code and then patches and replaces lines of code inside the other the other file. The advantage of doing this is that means that you know exactly what needs to change in that open source library and when the open source library updates or has code changes to it, you don't have to start from scratch to make all your changes. You can just figure out what the deltas are and go from there. In test end, I've written a little utility to help you do this. And let's go look at it. And this is a pretty simple implementation you can go nuts on automating this. 
but a couple words of warning the default process models that you're going to be working with are in program files x86 in the test and components models test and models directory never modify those files unless you want to risk a reinstall so what you want to do is you want to copy it out before you modify it and i'll go show you that i've also set up my little tool there's a there is two inputs and the tool itself so basically i'm going to keep uh, one file is the sequence the sequential model that i'm working with and this is just a copy out of the test and directory so i know which one exactly i'm doing it then i have the patches file and the patches file is interesting because what i have done is i just went to the sequential file and i copied the sequences i'm interested in over and then I do the modifications to them. In this case, for the pre-UT dialog, I, I have it open. I haven't added a dialog to it, but this is where I would do it. The other two that I commonly do and use is process setup and process cleanup. And I typically use these two callbacks for initializing and cleaning up the hardware extraction layer. Process uh, setup and cleanup are typically used and they're launched when you press the go button and process setup happens before you get to the pre-UUT dialog and process cleanup happens after you you close the pre-UUT dialog to say you're, you've stopped testing. So it's pretty it's pretty clear from here that these are the only things that I want changed inside a process model and this is I would comment these and more if I was if this was going into production. And then on the utility what it does is I have a couple paths, so I tell it the model I'm working with, you could technically call the sequential model out of the x86 directory. I won't let you change it since we're not changing it, but I would recommend making a copy out just to be safe. And then it, it asks you uh, what is the path to your uh, patches sequence, so I put that in, and then where do you want to output it? Once you have these, these paths set up, it opens the model, using the engine it opens the patches file using the engine we then use the engine to create a new sequence file we remove the default main sequence that is that it inserts when it creates the sequence file we have to change the model or the sequence file type to model if you're not familiar you could do this this is equivalent to going into sequence file properties going to advanced and then you're, you're changing the type to model basically And then what we do is we run two for loops. The first for loop copies all of the sequences from the patch file into the new file. The second one opens up the, the process model file and it checks and for each sequence in the process model file, if that, if that file name is already inside the, the new file, it doesn't copy it over. If it's missing, it copies it over. Then we save the file, and then we close all the files that we've opened or created. And I'm going to delete this real quick and run it. And it's just like that. And then if we go over here, you'll notice it's actually reordered it. So the, all of our changes are now at the top of the file. And then all, everything that was already in the, the process model file but was not changed comes in after that. So you can pretty easily see which ones we've added and which ones have not been changed. And when we go for a code review or something, we would pull up the patch file and show these are the, one, these are the only ones we have changed. That's the patcher like that then if we go to if we wanted to test it to make sure it works we're going to take our callback done and then on this the sequence file you see right now it says this is the model it's using so we're going to go to sequence file properties advanced acquire specific model and for testing purposes i'm just going to use an absolute path for production purposes, never do that. You should be using search directories. 
Okay. And then we press go. You'll see at the bottom it says I'm now using the custom ATE sequential model. Before we see the, the pre-UT dialog, I put a dialog in there and it says it's initializing instruments. We have our pre-UT dialog, which I, I'm going to override later. And if I press stop, it does the shutting down instruments. And that is how you patch sequence files or s sequence process models.